Hello, my name is Tulsi Patel, and I'm the events coordinator at the local Ontario Tech Committee of the World University Service Center. Today, we will be speaking with Rose Natike, an Olympic athlete on the Refugee Olympic team for track and field, on this episode of Hashtag Save Sudan. So, hi Rose, I hope you're doing well. Would you mind providing an introduction for us about who you are and what you do currently? Okay, hello everyone, my name is Rose Natike from South Sudan. I'm a student at Sheridan College, planning to study uh, sport management as my career. Maybe after some few months, I'll figure out what to do next. Okay, moving forward with that, um, could you describe where you grew up and in what conditions you grew up and what led you to make the decision of migrating to Canada from South Sudan? Well, when I was uh, eight years, I arrived in Kenya in 2002. So I started my new life from there after I almost had uh, 20 years. When I grew up in Kakuma, girls were not supposed to play sport because, you know, to some of the other culture in South Sudan specific, where I come from, uh, especially let me take example of my dad. He didn't want me to, to, to engage in sport. So the school for us was that hard to join the school and also to engage in sport. Only boys could, could join the, at that time. Then at, when, when the girl reached 15 years, you are supposed to get married to one of the people or they can maybe bring for your husband or whatever they need, which is not good. And also we, I just decided to stand as me, Rose, to, to decide go to school and also uh, play sport. Especially I was playing soccer when I was in Takuma refugee camp before I shift to athletic program. Okay, so just following up on that, what was it like growing up in Kenya and having all those customs about getting married at 15, not being told that you couldn't do any sports, couldn't join any teams. Was, what was it like? Was it affecting your education as well? Okay, to check you on that, uh, it was really affecting my education because I was told to take care of my siblings because, you know, I, I, I took care of my siblings in Kakuma refugee camp when my parents were in South Sudan. They went back to South Sudan in 2008. Then all the burden was left to me so that I can able to take care of them. So it, the life was so hard for me to go to school and also uh, attend practice for soccer. I have to sometimes come back and take care of them and also sometimes to miss classes because I have to take care of my younger siblings as well. Yeah, for sure. That sounds like an extremely overwhelming circumstance that you were faced with. And now you're an Olympic athlete, so I'm just wondering what pushed you, what motivated you into pursuing sports, knowing that you grew up in a culture that restricted you from doing so. Okay, not just sport event like the Olympic uh, Olympic Games. Since it was our first time for the Refugee Olympic team to be introduced in history, we thank the Thomas Bach, the president of IOC for letting us, the refugee, to start a sport so that we can able to give hope to other displaced people like refugees. And we thank God uh, that one was started in the year 2016. When we were selected, actually, we took only eight years for training. And I thank God I was one of them to be the first Olympian. And then also the best experience that I had in, in Rio, it was that when I was selected to be a flag bearer representing the refugees, because uh, being a refugee, no one choose to be a refugee. We, we all face the same challenges. And like, we thank God that we can able to, to show our talents to the world and also to encourage some other young refugees who are facing the same problem as we. So I think uh, through sport and also education, that will, will, it will ha- it help all the refugees around the world to at least to figure what to do in future rather than just staying in the refugee camp without thinking of going to school and also maybe because some of them are dropping out of school due to lack of uh, opportunity or chance that are people who are supposed to maybe support them so we did our best and also we thank god we went to to tokyo this year and also the number was increasing including the paralympic because you know disability is not inability we thank god we had 30 35 uh, players from the refugee team, of which is a good number compared to, to the one of 2016, because we are only 10. So we are still encouraging the young also to engage in sport because sport brings bring people together. It unites and also 
it brings peace to all the people around the world, not only the refugees. Because when we when you are playing engaging in sport, uh, we don't we don't have that discrimination of saying uh, this so and so is from another country, this one is from no sport bring people together, and that way I think it will it will let us to change our lives sometime as long as the refugees are given chance to engage the to expose their 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 talents to the world. You said that you were the first of the refugee Olympic team because they just recently started about eight years ago. Is that correct? You said that? Yeah. So how did that feel when you, you know, predicted circumstances and you were what you said you were a flag bearer. You were chosen to be a flag bearer in Rio. And yes. that's a very moment of proud. You know, you were bringing recognition not only to refugees, but also to all the young girls and young girls in South Sudan who are who want to be you one day you know who have these similar dreams but they are unable to pursue them because of the circumstances that they're being faced against yeah okay because what i can say uh, you know sport can be fantastic for all refugee women especially sure. girls of it course brings, yeah it brings hopes and excitement as well as competition i will never forget the feeling of working on in rio as the flag bearer for a refugee in 2016 So being a runner has taught me that refugee women and girls can also be able to aspire, aspire to more and also it can able to they have right to access in education and they have that right of also saying enough is enough for 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 the girl not to go to school like now we got so many refugees who are getting the scholarship uh, including both men and women which is good and also we like to encourage more other gu- other girls around the world to 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 join the school because education is the key to 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 life as long as you do what makes you happy and also what you think will help you in future that way it will just help you to at least change your life one day one time because we are all human beings that is some really real and fantastic advice i also agree with that that you know education is really the key to your future and you really should be doing what you want to do because at the end of the day it's your future and it's not something that should be decided by society i completely agree with you on that and just following up on your feeling of walking on the olympics if there was a young girl from south sudan listening to our podcast right now and she was facing with you know family issues or custom issues about not not wanting not being able to chase her dreams what advice would you give to her what kind of strength and courage would you give to her so she could take the same stance you did okay to all the girls around the world to all the women you need to stand firm and take your decision because we are all human being and we can able decide what to do and if you decide maybe to go to school then that is your choice if you decide to to engage in sport it is also good we also got so many talents uh, which are going on like you can be a musician you can be a basketballer anything that you want to be in the future as long as the thing that you are doing helps you So we need to encourage all the young girls especially those who are living in refugees camp also to engage in sport and also go to school that is the only way we can able to change our life so that one day one time we can go back to our country and rebuild our country so that we can able to bring peace through sport Wow I really in loss of words because you face such excruciating circumstances in your life and seeing you achieving all your dreams it really inspires me and i'm lucky i have all this privilege and i really do hope that all young girls are inspired by this and are able to go back and help their country and help uh all the other girls who may be suffering right now so thank you truly for being here today and i really just want to ask if you have any final words to say before we conclude this do you have anything else you would like to say to our girls to all women really just listening to us right now okay maybe to give thanks to you the host ontario for making me to speak to you guys today i'm so happy it is my privilege to speak to you because you know when we are all students and we need to encourage each other especially the refugees so thank you so much for hosting me i'm so happy 
Yeah, no, they, it's my privilege. You said you mentioned it's your pl- privilege to be interviewed. It's my privilege to interview you. You're a star. You're an Olympic athlete. Like this is probably the highlight of my entire year. I'm gonna go to all my friends and I'm gonna tell them that I interviewed a an Olympic athlete. So thank you so much for being here today, and thank you for speaking to all the girls and inspiring all of us. We wish you all the best of luck for all your future games. And I just really want to say that keep doing what you're doing, keep inspiring all these young girls, and keep fighting for Sudan. And I really pray that your goals. I really hope that you do achieve them, and I really do hope that you've made a difference in my life with just this short of an interview. And I really do hope. that the words that you are speaking from your heart they really do reach the hearts of the girls from south sudan so okay. just think once more thank you elisa it was really great speaking with you and just from here we're going to conclude our episode with hashtag #save sudan as rose natike brought up really amazing points about how girls really face so much struggle and all the struggle that is not known in this north american culture as especially about the custom of getting married at the age of 15 girls not being allowed to play sports not education not being a priority in women's life back there and it's really important that we spread awareness to all these social issues and make a stand for it so that one day we can make sudan and the world a better place for women and children to be in So thank you once again. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening to us and we hope to come back with another episode. South Sudan or Southern Sudan is located in the northeastern part of Africa just south of Sudan. The country gained its independence from Sudan on July 9th, 2011. Shortly after independence, the ruling political party, the Sudan People's Liberation Movement, who led the country to its freedom, turned against themselves and got divided in the fight for power. This resulted in a political conflict and infighting that started in December 2013 after the South Sudanese president, President Salva Kiir Mayardit, made an accusation against the vice president Riek Machar of an attempted coup. These political infighting resulted in street violence in the capital city, Juba. The violence extended across the country and in just the first month of conflict approximately 413,000 civilians were displaced. In no time this became a civil war affecting the whole country as livelihoods were destroyed, people fleeing forcefully from their homes, coupled with disrupted planting as a result of the inadequate rainfall in 2018 that slashed crop production. And all this sexual violence was present prevalent as Some women and children were abused during home raids or while fleeing from their homes or even during their search to meet basic needs. Note that some parts in South Sudan have been declared to face famine back in early 2017, hence leaving approximately 100,000 people on the verge of starvation. As of June 24th, 2019, Quote, since the conflict began, one in three people in South Sudan have been displaced. More than four million citizens have been forced to flee their homes. Around 2.3 million people have escaped to neighboring countries in search of safety, and 1.8 million people are trapped inside the warring nation. South Sudan is one of the most fled countries in the world, alongside Syria, Afghanistan, and Venezuela. End quote. In 2018, a recent peace deal slash agreement was signed. Though the peace deal was violated on several occasions, finally the revitalized transitional government of national unity was formed in February 2020 in accordance with the peace deal. Though related violence decreased as a new government that included members of the previously warring parties emerged, communal violence increased. The communal violence was partly caused from the spillover war grievance and from competitions over land, cattle, and grazing. The human rights situation is also found to be really serious. There has been a decline where citizens can question the authorities or even participate in governance issues. However, thankfully, the use of social media and blogging sites have been explored by some young people as an avenue to raise awareness, discuss important issues, and call for change. Wusk is connected to South Sudan as its vision to build a better world for all young people. 
This is where the intention for them to have a good quality of life, which includes a safe, secure, and supportive environment that is free from violence and abuse. WUS supports South Sudan. Globally, a major part of WUS's work is empowerment. This allows the voices of young people to be listened to and amplified. WUSC has a role to play in using its platform to listen and amplify the voices of the refugees and oppressed caused as a result of the political conflict suffered by South Sudanese people. Awareness creation is key. WUSC can contribute in creating awareness to encourage peace and support. In addition, humanitarian aid will be very well appreciated from other organizations in order to meet the needs of people and combat human suffering. The Student Refugee Program, one of the particular ways that was assists uh, certain South Sudanese students, is a resettlement pathway that is offered to young refugees currently from Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania, Uganda, Jordan, and Lebanon through post-secondary education in Canada. As an official sponsorship agreement holder operating under Canada's private sponsorship of refugees mode, WUSC has received confirmation from Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada to sponsor refugees to study in Canada as permanent residents. In addition, WUSC local committees and various post-secondary institutions in Canada are also permitted to do the same, in a sense sponsor refugees under the WUSC name. So far, over 2,000 refugees have been resettled and over 100 Canadian school partners, including universities, colleges, and CEGEP campuses, have joined to support the WUSC vision of resettling refugees, including those from South Sudan. Built on the four decades of experience of WUSC in supporting over 2,000 refugees via the Student Refugee Program, a new pilot program um, including the International Olympic Committee Refugee Olympic Team, has emerged. This program provides access to education as a refugee resettlement pathway in a safe third country. As of July 24, 2021, the first cohort of the Student Refugee Program were admitted to Sheridan College in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. The cohort consists of three athletes from the International Olympic Committee Refugee Olympic Team who took part in the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games. The athletes are Rose Nathike, who was our wonderful uh, guest speaker for this podcast, Paulo Omotun, and James Nyang. They will receive sponsorships as they resettle to Canada and continue their studies and um, athletic pursuits after the 2021 Tokyo Games. They will resume at Sheridan College for the 2021 and 2022 academic year. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Let's Talk About the Hashtag podcast series. For this episode, please be sure to follow us on our social media to learn more about the initiatives at WUSC at Ontario Tech. You can follow us on Instagram at wusc.otu. Thank you. Thank you.